Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. This week on Hot and Cold, we're going to build us a hearth. You stay right there. Well, here we are. We're getting ready to put in our, our pellet stove, but before we do that, we want to have it on a, a non-combustible surface, and that means we need to build the floor up just a bit, put down something non-combustible. Ain't nothing more non-combustible than slate, and that's what we used in other parts of the house, and I've saved all, I had a lot of extra, well, not a lot of extra, but I have enough extra to do this hearth and do some other things, which we'll do later on in the season. And I'm just laying out stuff just to make sure everything is right, and, and it is. Um, we're going to, these are uh, six by six, six inch by six inch um, slate tiles that were in the bathroom. And boy, <laughs> they're very irregular. They're rustic. And you know, as I've said in the past, rustic is good because you can do something that is rustic and not know what you're doing, and everybody says, huh. Boy, that's a real artist right there. So that's what we're going to do. We've got those for, for the edge. We're going to put them around the edge of the hearth like this. Here's a, a mock-up of at least the corner. And then in the field, we're going to have our 12-inch square slate tile, different batch of tile, probably from a whole different place. And uh, that will that is left over from the kitchen floor. We'll put that there. So we're going to have 6-inch all around the perimeter. 12 inch in the center, and we're going to have to cut some 12 inch to go against the wall. We'll do that in a few minutes. And being as I do a TV show and I have lots of power tools, I didn't bring the one power tool I needed, which was a recip saw, to cut the um, baseboards back. But that's okay because we're going to hold that off the wall anyway because I think we're going to tile this area in back after we install the stove. I'm not going to do it before because we have to poke a hole through the wall and rather than tile it up and say, oh, we want to move things this way or that way, we'll do the stove first, then there's a thimble that goes through the wall. We can map out exactly where everything goes around the thimble and we can tile if we want to. We don't have to tile behind the stove, but we might just to carry through with the theme of lots of stone because it's wintertime, we got to have something to do, right? Okay, so. I've got, this slate tile was very economical. I always shop for deals. I'm always looking for the stuff that is brought in. This came from, uh, all these tiles came from Home Depot. And I'm always looking, regardless of where I shop, for what they're bringing in as a, as a deal to get you in the door. Because that's the stuff I'm going to use if, if I like the way it looks. Some of it can be ugly, but usually I find some nice looking stuff. So usually enough variety. They, the buyers are looking for things that people will want to use in their home that is not ugly and of course fits with my taste. So anyway, so, so here we are back to the wood floor again um, and we've got to put down an underlayment. We don't have to but this floor as you recall was a little bit funky. It, it's pieced together in different places so we could probably have gotten away with gluing the tile right to the floor but I can Guarantee you, where we're, especially where we're dealing with stone, natural stone, we might have something crack. We don't want anything to crack. And I've done this enough that I realize that, especially on a substrate like this with the bounce, we're going to put underlayment. So the underlayment we have is this uh, Durock. This is a half-inch cement board. And we're going to cut a three-foot by three-foot piece. We're making our life very simple here. And I actually started ahead of time. I'm just scoring it with my razor knife. It kind of works like sheetrock, 
if I pick this up now, stand it on edge, and I push from the back side, it's kind of cementy because it is cement board, and we just score the back side. It's got a little bit of a plastic mesh in it. We score the back side. We pop her. Now we've got a piece of door rock to do something with. We don't need that piece. This is three foot by five foot. And you can see here it's a little rough on the edges, so we'll clean that up. Matter of fact, let me grab a hammer and we'll just beat on that a little bit before we go too much further. Hammer and, oh, I need, need some other tools. Time for some tools. Okay, so we just cleared off that edge a little bit. And we're going to take this and we're going to put it right approximately where we want it to be, which is right here. And it's three foot by three foot, and I marked the, the far edge where I want it to be. And that's our hearth. And I'm not going to clip the edges. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to make it functional. And I'm just going right up against the baseboard because I'm going to pull the baseboard out later. And uh, now we just are going to take some screws. and screw to the floor. And you can see here how I'm going to go about every, on an 8 inch, 8 inch center. Um, we don't want to be cheap as uh, we screw this down because this has to be rigid. Uh, again, we've got stone that we're holding, or we're going to stick onto this, and we don't want this. We don't want this to flex or move, and we also want to make sure that this counter sinks a little bit, and there is a little bit of roll to this floor. I'm seeing as we, so we'll 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 make that up with the uh, with the thin set, but every eight inches, I'm going to. And uh, when I do the wall, if I do the wall, I might, I don't necessarily need to use the door rock on the wall, but I probably will just to make it um, a little more pronounced from the wall, which would give me a little bit of room to jazz up the edges if I go that way. Um, one of the motivating factors of putting, I had a line over here, we're over about an inch and a half from where I thought I'd put it. So I wanted to stay, keep this edge clear of this electrical outlet. So um, uh, we're out of that domain of three foot by three foot where the stove is. It's not going to be hot in the back of the stoves. These stoves are made to put all their heat out this way and they're there's uh, insulation and barriers on the back side to make sure that happens, but it doesn't hurt to have the, uh, um, have the outlet just adjacent. We don't want to be too far away. We don't want to be running cords across the wall. But while I'm putting screws in the floor, I know this is entertaining to you because there's always the possibility I could put the screw through my knee or something. Uh, but we got to take a break. Let's take care of a little bit of business and we'll be right back. Hey, we're back, and she's all screwed down, and now um, we're going to mix up some thin set, and I think I have enough to do this. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> it always happens that I think I have enough, and then I go and mix it, and I don't have enough, and then I go and buy a bag of it, and then I mix too much for the little bit I have left to do, but I've got enough here to do this. This will work fine. So let's adjourn to the kitchen. We will mix the thin set. Okay, so uh, we're in the kitchen and I'm going to just pour in, actually I'm not going to pour in yet. I'm going to take some water. I always like to pour into a bucket that has some water in it just because I think it makes less dust. You always wonder which makes sense to do first. Put the water in or the the uh, mortar. Um, I like to do it this way because when the dusty mortar hits the water it stops being quite as dusty. 
And the other thing is, I wonder if I put too much water in there. That's the other thing I always do wrong. That's okay. That's why a lot of people like to use premixed mortar. <laughs> Thin set. Uh, let's see. Obviously, when you store this stuff, you should have it in a dry place. You shouldn't breathe the dust like we're doing right now. And let's try to get some water mixed in there so it's not quite so dusty. This is good TV, huh? Boy, I hope I didn't put too much water in there. I have a feeling I did. <clears throat> Remember what I was saying about mixing too much? Okay. Just remember that. When we're done here, we'll see what we have left. I actually have a little project. I, I, I found one little piece of tile that I missed here in the kitchen, so. <clears throat> Stand up and let that settle for a minute, huh? There we go. All right. What we want to do is mix this. It should be about the consistency of peanut butter. And it is that consistency. <clears throat> we could use a, uh, a mixer on a, uh, on a drill, but I like to do it by hand in small batches like this. If I was doing a lot, I'd have a mixer or I'd get pre-mixed. And if you look at the prices, I mean, the pre-mixed stuff comes in a nice bucket and everything, but it is more money. So it is not a big deal to mix your own mortar. Usually you do this outside. This time of year we're not doing anything outside if we can avoid it. And, and that's ready. So what we're going to do, obviously you don't want, it's just like making cookie dough. You don't want to have any lumps in there or dry, dry bits. And that looks pretty good. I've got way more than I need, which is okay because we might, well, we might need it. And, and I'll tell you why we might need it. Um, None of those tile are the same thickness. I tried to pick tile that's approximately the same thickness, but I'm, I'm sure we're going to find that some are thicker than others. So we'll put a thicker bed on here and try to even it up as best we can before uh, we set any tile. That'll be good. Um, the uh, thing we have to do now is the thing that I find most entertaining about doing tiling. So we have to let the mortar sit for about 10 minutes to as I put it at least, slack off. It's a good time for me to go have a cup of coffee and when we come back we'll do some tiling. Okay, so here we are. We've got some nice thin set. Maybe I did this just about right. Let's assume I did, huh? And be funny if I didn't have enough after giving you that whole spiel about mixing too much and and uh, and the rest that would be embarrassing but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay out some tile the gonna follow the edge of the um, underlayment here we're gonna go we're gonna eyeball the reveal between the tile to oop, about a quarter inch. I marked the center line here so I know approximately where I am. And these tile, as I say, are all over the place. There's nothing, absolutely nothing uniform about them. I guarantee you the lack of uniformity is complete. Uh, and maybe that's why they're cheap. But that's okay. I mean, you know, rustic is what we're going for. I'm you know, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you don't do this regularly, if you can get away by saying it's rustic, man, you're, you're, you're home free. So yeah, I do rustic stuff. All right, let's see what we got here. We got that, and eh, we'll put that there because we can hide that with the grout. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of seeding these to uh, try to See, that one's got a, I mean, there, there's waves in these things and everything, so that's a little bit of a thin end there on the back side, so let's get that. All right. 
Uh, we might as well go right to the wall. We got time. We're gonna have to take a break here in a minute, but don't take very long. Um, and you know, if you if if you don't do this, I mean, I do this somewhat. I don't do it as much as I'd like to. But if you have never done this before, there's no no regulation that says you have got to do things a certain way. You can take all these tile, take your time, and lay them out ahead of time. I kind of did that just to see where we were going to fall. Look at this. That one's a little tight. Okay, I'm right up against the, the uh, baseboard. I want to be away a little bit. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit here and slide these, the gap, close up the gap a little. I like a small grout line anyway on, on tile. I don't like big grout lines. I think we can, we can live with that. Okay. Do we drop in a, we only have to put a couple of these in. I don't know if I want to use that one. See how this is split? Again, this is natural stone. It's sedimentary rock and it's got a split in there. We're going to put that off to the side and let's get this one. See how that looks. That looks good. And we're going to drop that right on there. And, and these big ones may look more uniform, but they're not. So, <laughs> so we have to be extremely careful about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So let's get another one. I'm getting the high sign. We've got to take a break, but I've got to drop this tile first. Nunzio. And that is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift this up and get a little bit of mortar under that corner, but you can see we're making progress, and we're going to make progress while you're taking this commercial break. So stay with us. We will be right back. Okay. We're back. I've taken the liberty of, of getting a few more tile and getting a few more tile ahead, and you can see this really isn't taking any time for the time that the actual commercials ran. I just set these babies. Now, I did mark the line down the center and I'm more or less following it. And I'm leveling everything up and I'm trying to get six by sixes here that are approximately the same thickness and I seem to be doing okay on that account. And we get back to this back edge here and we've got to do something the tile, the big tile in the field are one foot square and we've got a six inch gap because it's three foot. We've got six inch pieces on the front so we've got six inch pieces on the back so that means we either put little ones around the back edge which I don't think makes any sense or we cut two tile. I say we cut two tile because it's a TV show and we got to do stuff and I just happen to have a tape measure I just happen to have some tile that are pieces that I can cut up to do the back. So I think if we do something approximately six inches with the tile saw, that would be good television. And that piece is seven inches. This piece is too thin, but I guess we could cut that one. Cut that one. That's got a thin edge busted off piece there, so we can make two six inch pieces. One from there, one from there, and this job will be done. I think we must go to the tile saw. All right, so we're over to the tile saw. Now this is an $88 tile saw, again from Home Depot. Guys are getting all kinds of plugs today, and this has paid me more ways than ever I can think. I have had this saw probably for 10 years. I paid $99. The price actually went down after I bought it but I haven't had to replace the blade. As long as you keep water in the tray, this is a wet saw, there's a tray under here with water in it, it will, uh, the blade will last a long time. I find that sometimes the blade fetches up because it corrodes if it isn't, you know, because it, it's put away wet. So uh, you just sometimes have to grab it, move it, but it's good to go. So what we're gonna do, this spews water all over the place which is one of the downsides of this particular, any wet saw, not just this one. And I'm going to get all wet, but that's okay because that's the only way I can cut this. If I try to do this with one of those uh, uh, carbide tip um, tile cutters, big mess, a lot of swearing. We don't want to do that. We're trying to uh, save our place in heaven. So <laughs> we do that without swearing if we can. So I'm going to kick it on.
I think this saw is starting to get to the end of its life. I just want to double check that, make sure it's square because I had a stop in the middle there. Looks like there might be a little bit of an angle to it. Yeah, it's a little bit off. All right, let's let's do the other one, and we'll go back, and we'll, yeah. Fence got moved when she bound up a bit there. The fence is kind of, boy, this thing's been had a hard life, hasn't it? Actually, sometimes I don't even use the fence, but we will here. Let's cut this one and see what we got. Uh, all right. You can see how it's spewing water all over, but that's okay. Yeah, that one's better. Let me just go back and touch this one up, and then we can go back and have some fun. All right, so we're just going to back butter this a little bit. Um, saw is giving me a little bit of conniptions here, but nothing too horrible. Let's drop this baby in right here. Let's see if we can get that. Edge, okay, let's do this one. And I do have enough mortar, I, I did it right, so. And we drop that one in there. And we, now that edge is a little high, but I don't know if we're gonna, actually that feels like it's, I didn't need to back butter that one, huh? But we get the get the spacing about right. That's what I like. And we just go over everything again and see if there's any mistakes. I don't think so. I think that looks pretty doggone good what we got right there right now. So <clears throat> what we'll do now is this sets for 24 hours till the thin set cures. Then I will come back in and we've got a sanded, gra uh, sanded grout. And I don't have to mix up much grout because stop and look here. You know, the grout is obviously filling the cracks. There aren't that many cracks to fill. And I've, I've shrunk them down a little bit from what I had. So, uh, and again, I think you'll find that the thin grout line matches up very well. When I do this kind of stuff, I like to get a grout that matches or, or comes close to the color of the tile. So it kind of hides the grout line and it becomes sort of in the background of, of the thing. I don't like to do a contrasting grout. That's just personal taste on my part. Uh, I think it looks a lot better. Um, so we've got something called pewter, which I find works well with, um, with the uh, slate, and it also seemed to work well when I used it with, uh, uh, with granite tile, too. So I've got, I'm cleaning mortar off my arm while we're talking here. Uh, so this is basically it. Now, if you were doing a bigger area, you would um, do basically the same thing. Obviously, you'd put down more tile, more underlayment, and do more thin set, and you'd be on your knees a lot longer. I've gotten to a point where either all the cartilage is out of my knees or something, but I don't mind not doing this or doing this without knee pads. So uh, uh, I may I may swear about it a little bit later, but that's okay. The um, we're also going to do. We have a front door here. I think anywhere there's an entry point, you stop and think about it. This is nice stuff to have where you're coming into a building. Even if the rest of the floor is hardwood, it's nice to have this because this will take the grit, the salt, um, the water that comes in and will stand up extremely well. This is um, a little bit more rustic in the sense that it is, a, again, a sedimentary stone. And as I showed you earlier, it does kind of flake off. But you can seal it. The sealer will help to hold it together a little bit. Uh, we won't seal underneath here. We haven't sealed the kitchen floor yet, um, and, and we might never do it at the rate we're going. But I think, um, regardless, the slate in particular stands up very well and looks good and is absolutely perfect for around entryways. I actually, uh, we have a lot of dirt on the basement down here, so I brought the kitchen floor around to where the, um, 
uh, basement door is. So if we have any mud or wetness on our feet from the basement, we don't bring it on to what will eventually be a new hardwood floor over here. Anyway, I think we're ready for the stove guys. And we'll have them in here um, next week. Oh boy, I'm looking forward to this. And I want you to, uh, if you don't get to catch any other show, you want to catch that one because you'll be amazed at how quickly these things go together and how fun they are to watch, how much fun there is in actually getting it hooked up because it's pretty idiot proof, which is why I like to do these kind of projects. And I have experts who are going to do it anyway. Uh, and I'll just be here to ask stupid questions. And that's what I do. Anyway, right here on this program every week. And uh, tell your friends if they're in other parts of the state, we are on public access down in Portland and many other areas in Maine now. So the far reaches, those far away places, if, if you know folks who have cable, you're going to get hot and cold. So if, if there's a show you want them to see, by all means, uh, tell them that and, and check with their local cable uh, public access channel. Of course, we're on the radio. If you have any questions, you want to give us a call. Please do so. You'll see we're at the end of the show. Check out the website. We're in the process of doing a whole new website. By the time this airs, we might have a whole new website. So if you said, you know, Tom, you haven't done anything on the website in a while, now's your chance. Are we out of time? We are out of time. I'm talking too much. I'm going to go while the mortar sets, and we'll see you next week. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.